Hello, I'm Charlotte Owen Bird, editor of UN Climate Champions website, Race to Zero and Race to Resilience. I'm honored to be joined today by the legendary Dr. Sylvia Earle, marine biologist, chair and president of Mission Blue and National Geographic Explorer. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Earle, for joining us today. Dr. Earle, what's the situation? What are we currently facing if we don't urgently act to restore the health of our oceans? <laughs> well, we're in trouble. If the ocean is in trouble, so are we. But I think the great good news is we know what the problems are. Imagine if we did not know. We'd continue doing the same stupid things. I say stupid, but really in ignorance in the past, but now we know. The key right now is, is really taking seriously the problems we face and knowing that we can turn things around. We're in a state like this, the planet on a planetary scale. And if people think it's just too big a problem, realize that we can all do something about it, but it's going to take all of us doing something about it to move from this to this. Mm -hmm. And here, this is on a high level country scale, international scale, but countries and the companies that are also here, industry is represented, but it all comes back to people. Individuals make up countries. Individuals make up companies. Individuals are make, what make the world go around. And so it's, I think that's cause for a celebration because you, whoever you are, you can make a difference either by what you actually do or what you fail to do. The choices you make times a hundred or a thousand or a billion and that's where we're at. Mm. That's what makes the world what it is. And that's the core of Mission Blue. So how important is public support for this versus the support by governments? Well, of course, we need the commitments of governments representing people and to make sure if you are in a country that does not represent what you think is moving in the right direction, Use your voice, use your individual power. And people say, I don't have power, but you do. <laughs> I mean, everybody does. Mine is different from yours. And everybody is, has something that they are good at doing that makes them who they are. I work with engineers. I'm not an engineer, but I want to build a submarine. I collaborate with others who have what I don't have I have what they don't have, together we move forward. Here, everywhere, that's how it works. Mm. We make progress by, by collaborating, by joining with others who, who complement what we can do. Mm. And it's how the world has progressed over the ages. Mm. Maybe some actors don't realize that they actually have a role to play in protecting the ocean. Do you think that everyone should play a role? So from banks to corporations to small and large businesses? Absolutely, yes, yes, yes. But it starts with you, it starts with me, it starts with all of us. What are the choices you make? Because that's, that's not only where it begins, that's together, collectively, we in the past have viewed the ocean as free goods. Let's go catch something. Let's go take something. If we don't get that, somebody else is going to get it. Mm. I mean, what we're doing now to the ocean in terms of extracting wildlife out of the ocean on a mega scale, it's not only harming life in the ocean, we're, we're now looking at it as blue carbon, like clear cutting trees on the land. We put a value on that. That's a part of the carbon cycle, mm. taking life out of the ocean is clear cutting the ocean on a scale that is now impacting the climate. Mm -hmm. And it's impacting the diversity of life. Most of the greatest diversity and abundance of life is in the ocean. And we are, have, because of the habits of the past, looking at the ocean as free goods. There's you know zero accounting base for, for tuna and swordfish and krill. All we have to do is go out and catch it, and you don't have to pay for it. 
once you've taken it out of the ocean. And you kill a lot of things in the process of extracting the targeted species. And we leave a, a lot of trash and junk behind. Mm. But the, the key, you know, that was the past. In the 21st century, we have to get over the idea that we can feed the world with wildlife. We used to do it with wild birds and furry things on the land. We used to regard whales as commodities. Mm. We've seen a change. Mm. So in Davos, the World Economic Forum, mm. in 2020, a value on living whales, blue carbon, for climate was put at a big T, trillion dollars for whales. I haven't seen a figure yet for the living value of all the other blue carbon in the ocean. What are, what are tuna alive worth as compared to tuna dead? Mm. What are krill in Antarctica alive versus dead <laughs> worth? When you take them out of the ocean, you release carbon dioxide, methane into the atmosphere, contributing to the climate issue of excess carbon dioxide. Keep those animals, keep the plankton that feed the animals, that hold the carbon, that sequester the carbon in the ocean. That, that is protection of, of carbon and not allowing it to escape into the atmosphere. Mm. So I, I think understanding the carbon cycle should be as basic as learning your alphabet, as basic as learning your numbers as a kid or as a grown up. We tend to follow the money. Mm. We need to follow the carbon. Absolutely. Because that translates to life, our lives. You know, you, you, know, you can't eat money. Mm. And we have to think differently about what the living planet is worth because it's our existence that is dependent on it. Mm. So is it just industrial fishing that needs to end or is it small scale fisheries too, do you think? Well, industrial fishing is the headline big problem, mm. especially in the high seas, because few countries are out there in the high seas, that part of the planet, half of the world, that if it's owned by any of us, it's owned by all of us, the global commons. <laughs> it's kind of a self-centered view that we own any of it, but half of the world is beyond national jurisdiction. We have to work together to say, we, we need to protect that heart of the heart of the planet that is the key to generating oxygen, capturing carbon, and the value of the living systems, the, the creatures who live there, should be the common gift, the common heritage. And we should not allow anybody to operate in the high seas or Think about Antarctica. Yeah. That's part of the high yeah. seas. There are deliberations taking place right now about how much of the waters around Antarctica can be protected and how much can we allow, we as if we own the waters around Antarctica, yeah. we humans, carve up for our limited purposes. Only a few nations are in Antarctica now extracting and destabilizing the blue carbon. Yeah that relates to climate. We protect all of Antarctica through an international agreement. Through international agreement, we've allowed the waters around Antarctica to be exploited. Mm. The krill, the deep sea fish. It used to be that we would take seals, penguins, and whales. Mm. We've kind of stopped doing that, but then we've started taking the other creatures that are in the mm. system, which you, know, you, you can't save whales if you don't also save what they eat. Mm. And to save humans, we have to really look at how it all fits together. And it isn't that hard. It isn't. Understanding the water cycle. Where does oxygen come from? Look at the carbon cycle. How are we destabilizing the carbon through clear cutting trees, through burning forests, mm. through transforming the natural landscapes and the natural seascapes into 
purposes that seem like a good idea at the time mm. until you look at the big balance sheet and you say, wait a minute, oh, wait, we're altering the chemistry, we're altering the tem temperature. Mm. We have to safeguard Earth that has taken four and a half billion years to assemble in ways that work for us. Mm. It's only taken us you know, a couple hundred years and mostly in the last four and a half decades to mm. unravel these basic systems. Mm. But we know what to do. Yeah. There's plenty of reason for optimism. What needs to stop today, right now? Sorry? What needs to stop right now, today? If there could be one outcome or a, s a series of outcomes that come out of COP26, as far as protecting the ocean goes, what should they be? The goal that has been signed off on a number of com com companies coming into focus, at least 30% by 2030. The next 10 years, perhaps the most important in the next 10,000 years, 50% by 2050, scaling up protection, scaling down the destruction of the very life support system that makes Earth habitable, mm. looking at the diversity of life and how we've been chewing away at the elements that make Earth habitable on the land and now understanding that the sea is losing too. Yeah. So, but creating a network of protected areas hope spots mm. large enough to save the blue heart of the mm. planet. And many organizations are engaging, pristine seas, the National Geographic, the World Wildlife Fund, Nature Conservancy, Conservation International, Mission Blue is right in there. Mm. How, do we, how do we embrace land and sea as if our lives depend on it and take care of it mm. as, if, as if they do because we're, Yes. That's how it works. And, and final question, if I may. How important do you think that equal representation of men and women is in climate? Well, it seems so obvious. We're in this together. And the voices of half the world, the women, have not been as, as recognized as they must. And I must say, we have a, a bias about those who are currently the leaders, those in charge. But we need more representation from, of course, women. But the kids, I, it's so encouraging to see the voices of those who are inheriting whatever it is that those of us who have shaped the world up till now, and, they're, and, and what, we want to give them a better world, not, not just fragments of this and that, and also those who aren't yet born. That's the, this is the, if you had to be born at any time to be the most influential in history, this, to be a 21st century human being, yeah. is, is, this is where the action is. That, what we do or what we fail to do right now. And it's encouraging to see women taking their place, the rightful place, the important voice of all of us, at all ages, all sizes, all shapes, all cultures, <laughs> because we're all in this together. <laughs> it seems so straightforward. Mm. Let's work together. Thank you. On that note, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Sylvia L. Thank you so much.